put my uh, cell phone up that'll give you the amplified version okay. as well. But it says, but as many of those who heard the message believed, adhered to, and trusted in, and relied on Jesus as their Savior. So no, it did not say that they called okay. the Lord. So, so here's my here's my point though. Confession is essential to salvation, just as much as belief is. No doubt. All right, but in Acts four, in Acts four and verse four. The, the Bible does not say the Bible does not say that they uh, confessed. It just says believed. Now, did they confess? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they did. Okay. All right. So, so here's my point, sir. You accept you accept that they confessed Jesus, even though it's not in the text, even though it's not in the verse. You accept that they confessed him because you know the Bible says in another place they had to confess. True? Yeah, I think, you know, as, as, uh, as the, so, you know, yeah, I believe if a man, as the heart believes, the, the words come in naturally, yes. Okay, so, so why is it that you are willing to accept that believed, these people that believed, you know they also had to confess mm-hmm. in order to be saved? And my point is, if you will accept confession, even though it's not in the verse, why then will you reject baptism, even though it's not in the verse? Well, I don't necessarily, re- you know, reject that they wasn't baptized. You just give me a challenge to find the place where men. Do you, and you, you believe you said that you believe that they had been saved, but, but you, not, but not like, at the point of faith only. That's what you're arguing. Well, I'm saying belief. Many, but they heard the word believed. I'm saying belief stands for everything that a person must do to obey. Just like your your definition said, they what they 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 adhered to, they accepted, they obeyed. That's what that's what belief does. It stands for the whole of it. Yeah. So it stands for not only having personal faith in Jesus, but it also stands for confessing Christ, and it stands for repenting. And it stands for being baptized for the remission of sins, just like God said. Well, you know, again, all I was doing was, you know, just answering that challenge. You challenged me to find somebody, and you agreed yourself that they've been saved, but it is not recorded. But here's the thing, you know, the real deal is, I think the last time we talked, you know, I made mention that I had I had got born again in my room. I know I got born again. I called on the Lord. I experienced him. I got set free from drugs and alcohol. I've been sober for 20 years, and and I haven't been to your church. But you say I'm not right because you didn't baptize me. Well, well, sir. First of all, I I I don't have a church. Number one, but number two, I know you're not right just by what you're saying. When I when I read the Bible, when I read the Bible about what a person must do to be saved, I didn't hear. I don't hear the same thing that you tell me. You said you were in your room and you called on the Lord, and that's when you were saved. That's exactly right. And when you say you called on the Lord, what does that mean? You said a prayer or what? Uh, I told the Lord if he'd help me get my life straight, the rest of my life would be his. I, I started immediately reading the Bible, and even though I couldn't understand it before, it started to make it sense. I've read it through many, many, many times, and I've been drug-free, alcohol-free for 20 years. And Jesus said... By their fruit, you will know them. And so, don't go around and take pictures and criticize people. And we so, walk in love. And I don't so, at what that. point? And so, at what point, sir, were your sins forgiven? My sins were forgiven when I confessed them to the Lord, because I asked okay. Him to forgive me, and I have been baptized. Now, now, where, where in the Bible do you hear about someone having their? I'm talking about an alien sinner, someone who's outside of a covenant relationship with God. Where do you hear them having their sins forgiven by confessing their sins to God? Well, the Bible says, the Bible, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. The, the Bible says, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That word saved means to be redeemed. But, but sir, have a but relationship. I understand that, but we're going, back, we're going back to the same, we're going back to the same question that we had uh, before. Every time you see the word believe, you think that means that's, that's, that's the only thing. And I'm saying that sometimes when you see the word believe, 
It is standing for the whole of everything you have to do. Just like if I said, count heads to see how many people are here. Uh -huh. Well, when you start counting heads, you're counting a part, a, a body part, but it's standing for the whole of the body. See, if you said, well, I counted 20 heads, well, that means there's 20 people in the room. There's not just 20 heads, uh -huh. right? So when you in the Bible, when you see the Bible say they believed, Acts 4 and verse 4, that's standing for the whole of it. Because the inclusive nature of belief is if someone believes and is saved, then that means they're going to do everything else that's connected in order to be saved. If, okay. if someone says right, well, if repentance is part of being saved. Okay, then, I'll follow you with that. I got that. Okay. I got that now. Here's here's my here's my question. Okay. You're saying I got baptized, but you're saying because I didn't get baptized by your church, you say you don't pastor a church. No. But you said earlier that unless the Church of Christ baptized you, and you told me the last time I called in that I won't write because I didn't get baptized at your church. No, I didn't say that. I never would have said my church. Number All right, one, well, I got I got baptized, so then I'm right with God, right? No, because what you said was you said your sins were forgiven when you said a prayer. Or when you confess your sins. And I'm saying forgiveness of sins does not take place when you confess your sins to God. Number one, because nowhere in the Bible does the alien sinner confess their sins to God. God knows what your sins are. He doesn't need to hear you hear what they are. You don't find in the Bible where an alien sinner says a prayer and has their sins forgiven. Well, the, the Bible says that wrong. I got the TV cut there, so I don't know when you're talking. I'm sorry. The Bible says in Romans 10:10, 10, 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, there you go, is made unto salvation. Okay, but look at this. Unto righteousness and unto salvation. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that's not into. That's just unto. Mm -hmm. If I said, if you, turn, if you turn down Scale Street, you're getting unto the TV station. And if you get, if you turn on Gilmer Street, you're getting onto the TV station. But you're not in the TV station. Okay. You don't get in the TV oh, station until you walk in the door. Yeah, my phone, uh, my phone is going dead. So okay. here's, the, here's the thing. What, what I'm saying is, okay, I got baptized. All right, I, okay. I, it doesn't matter when I got born again. I called on the Lord. Ask him in my heart, and then I got baptized. So now, why am I not right? Because you, because you didn't do what the Bible says. That's what I'm trying to get you to see, sir. Yeah. Baptism is the doorway to put you into Christ. You said you're in Christ. Salvation is in Christ. Second Timothy two, think, in verse ten. Hey, let me say this, and I got to go. I just okay. think I know there's a God in heaven because okay. I've met Him, and I just think that I just can't. I just can't see God being so technical. I believe. That Jesus well, sir, come into the I, I know I know that you can't see God being so technical because you didn't do what God said. And you and, and just, it's like a lot of people, they don't want to believe that God wouldn't accept them and do and what they wanted to do. But what will, but God has specified what he wants. Saying, uh, you're saying I'm not saved, but for the last twenty years I've been living right, I've been serving the well, Lord, I've been that, that, but you know what, sir, there's a lot of good people. There's a lot of good people who do good things, but they're not saved. Well, I just can't. I mean, you know, the Bible says that you let, need no man. Let me man tell you this, sir. You know what? The one of the, let me let me just say this. Guide you into all truth. Sir, one of the one of the nicest persons I know. You know who it is? One of the nicest persons I've known who 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 has been very cordial and very friendly to me. You know who he is? His name's Larry Serber. He's an atheist. Now, just because, and my point is, just because you may have changed your life and gotten drug free and I'm, I'm glad of that I, I'm glad to hear that but that does not mean that you have done what the Lord said to have your sins forgiven well here's the thing here's the thing and I'm going to have to go after this I, I really feel that there is a God in heaven and I know him and, and Jesus said uh, that he came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost he said he didn't come to condemn the world as you know in John chapter 3 but that the world through him might be saved and if Jesus and our Father is so interested in sinners, I think that he'll, he'll, he'll take us and lead us and guide us into all truth. 
and he doesn't need people that are legalistic out here promoting sir, them when people you, just need to you know can how to get legal, right with God. Sir, and I you apologize. Can call me, I'm going to have to get off because you, Okay, all right. I appreciate your call. I appreciate your call. You know, you can, you can say that we're legalistic, but the fact of the matter is, sir, you are very liberal and loose with what God says. You don't want to do what God says. You want to say, well, I just think that God heard my prayer and I'm, and I'm saved and I was baptized, so I didn't do it in order. I didn't do the things that God said do, but you know what? I still think it's all right. Well, sir, you won't even follow. You can't even bake a cake with that kind of logic. Can you imagine that? I'm going to bake a cake. I'm going to put the flour in, and I'm going to put the eggs in, and I'm going to put it in the pan, and I'm going to put it in the oven, and I'm going to bake it for 30 minutes, and then I'm going to come back out, and then I'm going to pour the milk and the oil and everything else in it, and let's see if we got a cake. Oh, I put, but I put all the ingredients in it. I just baked it first. Now, friends, it just doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Now, let me, let me just make this statement about John 3 and verse 16. Read verse 17. For God sent not his Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Why? Because the world was already condemned. See? The world's already condemned. So what you need to do is realize that just because God sent his son, that doesn't mean that you're automatically saved or just because you say, I believe, you're automatically saved. You have to do what God says in order to have your sins forgiven, okay? I'm running up against the clock. You're on, you're on the word from the Lord? Yes, hello. Hello. You're on there. Yeah, I got a couple of questions. All right. When I, was in the, when I was in the military back in the 60s, uh, they only had one. They only wanted, uh, had one church in, uh, in in service, and that was a Catholic church. Okay. And they and they made us go to this Catholic church. I don't care what you was. They made us go to this Catholic church. Okay. All right, they made us go to this Catholic church. What, okay. I mean, this, this, this is the government doing this. Well, sir, all I'll tell you is I know, I know people have been in the military, and when they were told they, if they wanted to go to church, they would go to this ecumenical, everybody, you know, uh, Baptist, Catholic, whatever, all together, and he didn't go. No. Anybody who's ever been in the Marine Corps in the sixties, they they went well, to a Catholic church. Well, I'm 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 saying you didn't have to go. I'm talking about you went. They made you go. I wouldn't have gone. Well what were you gonna do? What would they have, what would they have done to me? They, they could have put you in jail well, or that's whatever. where I'd have gone then. That's where I'd have gone then. Because I'm not gonna worship with the Catholics. And pretend like their worship's been heard. That's why I think chaplains, these chaplains in these universities and these and these hospitals, chaplains are to me are the are the weakest uh, type of individuals there are because they have to cater to everybody, and you can't have any kind of conviction whatsoever as a chaplain, not not doctrinally. Well, and I would just say, sir, and and that's 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 one of the downsides of the military then. Which I'm not opposed to people being in the military. You know, I'm grateful that we have the military we have. But my point is, if I'm going to live a Christian life, you know, I don't care who it is. They're not going to tell me that I have to go and worship with a Catholic chaplain. That's the only, if you talk to anybody who was in, in the 60s in the, uh, at Paris Island in the 60s, you ask them. I'm just telling you, I'm, that may be the case. But I'm saying you didn't have to. You always had a choice. You could be put in jail. You know, yeah, they put you in jail. <clears throat> so, well, but I have one other question. Well, I got, I got, I've, I've got a few minutes, and I got another call. So, let me take this other call. I, I, okay. I, all right. Thank you for your call. Thank you. All right, you on the word from the Lord? Yes, uh, James, not the last caller, but the gentleman before. Uh, yes, sir. The one who said you were legalistic because uh, he brought up scripture, and then you did also. Um. If you listen to what he claimed his conversion story was, if you play that back, and I'd like to have a copy of it, by the way, the first thing he said was, I told God. Uh, I'd like to find is any salvation in the Bible, any conversion.
conversion experience where the person started off telling God. Uh, I have never heard that one before. Right. Well, which I, I know what your point is. He, he would say, well, he was just confessing to sins, which either way, you know, he's doing something. He's telling God something that God never told him to say. Well, actually... Actually, uh, uh, let me add one more word. I'm pretty sure if you play it back, you said, he said, I told God if he. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm remembering you, him saying that now. He was making no. the arrangement of what he would do. Exactly. That, that's an excellent point. An excellent observation. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of the verse we started with. Take heed how you read. What you did was you took heed how you hear. And... If more people were more careful about what they're hearing, if they would even listen to what they're what they're saying themselves, they might realize that what they're saying doesn't line up with what the Bible says. Well, I mean, I, I believe I I believe I was an alcoholic and I, and I drank for many years and I stopped drinking and at that time I believed I was saved too. Right. But but that's when I began to pick up the Bible, read it, believe it, understand it. And obey it. And it wasn't because I saw one verse. But anyway, thank you for your show, and uh, I'll see you at your tent meeting. Right. Okay. Thanks for coming out. Looking forward to seeing you. Uh, friends, we're, we're getting pretty close to wrapping up, but I do want to make this point about uh, the individual that said, uh, the, the caller, the, the two previous callers, where he said he made the same argument that people make about being able to know who, who is saved that people who are not saved cannot call Jesus Lord. Now, Dr. Jerry Carter uh, made this same argument uh, in our debate back in 2006. He said, no one can call Jesus Lord except by the Spirit. Therefore, if you call Jesus Lord, you have the Spirit. Well, let's just notice this right, right quick. In John 6, verse 20, let's see, uh, 8, notice this. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that ye believe on him who hath sent. They said, Therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Now, do they believe? No, they don't believe. They themselves say they don't believe. All right? Come down to verse 31. Excuse me, verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you true bread from heaven. Uh, for the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord. Now, remember, you can't call Jesus Lord unless you have the Spirit. That's what the previous caller said. Now, this is John Chapter 6, verse 34. They said, Lord. Now, they've already admitted they don't believe. Because they said, what must we do so that we may believe on you? All right? Then they said, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Uh, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye have not... that." Ye also have seen me and believe not. They said they didn't believe in Jesus. Jesus said they didn't believe in him, and yet they still called him Lord. You know what I say? I say the idea that someone can call Jesus Lord without having, uh, 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 unless they have the Holy Spirit, is a lie. These people didn't believe, and yet they still called him Lord. Now, that's what we're talking about being careful how you read. You don't read carefully. If you think that you can't call Jesus Lord unless you have the Holy Spirit, you need to read again. See? Need to read again. Friends, I'm, uh, I'm out of time. So I apologize. I'm not going to be able to take this call. But if you'll stay on the air, if you'll stay on the line, I'll take it off the air. But until next time, friends, we do want to uh, quickly put up our, uh, our information about the tent. I know we're going to be running some more previews, promos. And if, uh, we hope to see you at the tent. Remember, Religious Review... Uh, that comes on after the news. It's coming on. Brother Johnny Robertson uh, program, Religious Reviews, coming on at 1030 after the news. Hope, hope that you'll stay tuned for that. And come out to the tent. Starts Monday, September 19th, 7 p.m. And uh, we hope to see you there. So remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night.
There are three to four in the Roanoke area and in the Lynchburg area as well, too. From what we've seen so far on it, the post office says that volume of mail has dropped by 43 billion pieces of mail in the past five years, and first-class mail has gone down 25%. So in today's news conference, the post office said, well, what we're going to do is you will no longer, if these new changes are approved, you'll no longer get mail the day after it's sent. They'll go for only a two to three day window when your mail's delivered instead of one to three days right now. Been looking over the list here in North Carolina, it looks like East Durham, Winston-Salem, Century, Norman, and Five Points are the communities that